I'm Gina Price White, the Director of Archives and Special Collections at Winthrop University. Today I will be taking you on a tour of a portion of the first building that was built on campus here in Rock Hill. A building that holds the memories, the triumphs, and the tra tragedies of this 135-year-old institution of higher learning. The cornerstone of the main building was laid in May 1894. The building is a massive masonry and stone building in the Richardsonian Romanesque style that was so popular in the 1890s. The original general contractor went back bankrupt and had to abandon the project. President D.B. Johnson and the Board of Trustees were forced to use convict labor from the local jail and from the state prison in Columbia to complete the building on schedule. There are stocks that still exist in the basement where convicts were held when being punished for infractions. People who have been on the basement level of this building late at night have reported hearing strange noises, muffled shouts, and voices, and even figures dressed in 1890s period clothing. The Winthrop Radio Station was located in the basement here in the main building in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. A student DJ whose show ran from 10 p.m. to midnight needed a quick bathroom break, so she put on a long playing song and ran to the bathroom just down the corridor toward the area where the stocks were located. On her way back to the studio, she saw a man leaning against one of the doorways. She had been locked in by campus police and was supposed to be the only person in the building. Frightened, she ran to the studio and locked the door. She called campus police and while sitting there waiting for them, she realized that the man had been dressed in an 1890s suit with a vest, coat, hat, and a pipe clamped between his teeth. She had caught the sweet aroma of pipe smoke. Camp campus police found the building still secure with no one inside but her. Was this the spirit of the convict superintendent waiting for a convict to lock in the stocks? Or someone playing a trick on the unsuspecting DJ? You decide. The entire main building consists of five and a half floors, including the basement. Early in Winthrop's history, the top floor was used as classroom space with an office or two. Various classes were taught in the four classrooms on the fourth floor. The fine arts department was housed in the half floor that is considered the fifth floor. The whole top level of the building ceased to be used in the early 1930s. Winthrop as a lot of schools and businesses in South Carolina had a difficult time in the 1930s during the Great Depression, which, as you know, was the worldwide economic downturn that began in 1929 and lasted throughout the 1930s. It was the longest and most severe downturn ever experienced by the industrialized world. Winthrop's enrollments dropped and open positions were not filled. Even some teachers were let go because Winthrop could no longer afford them. The top level was no longer needed. These stairways have been used by thousands of Winthrop students over the years. How many spirits roam them as well? You are about to enter a floor that is rarely seen. The floor is generally unoccupied, but there are many stories of strange noises and unusual shadows on this level. You may want to turn on a light if you're watching alone. This is the hallway of the fourth floor. It's long and wide. Uh, it's a long and wide space, but not very bright. Um, can you imagine dozens of students in their navy blue uniforms scurrying around trying to get to class on time? Many students used this hallway over the 40 plus years that this level was used for classes. Students whose spirits they wish to come back to relive those halcyon days of their youth. Let's be quiet and listen. Filled with winter girls. 
girls in their long, blue wool skirts and white shirt waist, listening intently to their professor as she lectured and wrote notes on the chart. The cool autumn wind is blowing through the window as the students quietly take notes. steps lead to the half floor that is on the front of the building. Prepare yourselves. We are now going through a doorway to an area for which there are many accounts of odd and extraordinary occurrences. This floor is consists of several classrooms, offices, and studios. In the early part of the 20th century, this area housed the Fine Arts Department. Most of the area was a part of a larger uh, area in the early 1900s. Walls and partitions had been um, built at a later date. Um, if you were up here by yourself, you, must, you most likely will hear creaking floorboards and phantom steps in the, in the rooms beyond. students used this area to sketch and work on uh, other projects. Uh, notice the skylight that's been boarded up. It flooded the area with uh, light and th that was added to enhance the light from the fixtures that were in the room at the time. The view is spectacular. And it's no wonder that a wandering spirit or two might choose to roam this floor's nearly empty spaces. This particular area was a classroom and a studio. Many strange phenomena have been observed in this area. Lights resembling lamps or candles have been seen moving across the space from a passerby on the sidewalk. One account notes that a student walking toward Riding Hall Apartments about midnight after a late night of studying for an exam with classmates noticed a light moving from window to window. The student stopped and looked up intently toward the top windows. In one of the windows was the face of a gentleman dimly lighted by the flames from a candle in his right hand. The figure's left arm appeared to be missing, as was Dee Dee Johnson. He looked at her, seemed to nod, and disappeared. Was this the founder and first president, David Bancroft Johnson, quietly checking on the campus to which he devoted 42 years of his life? Another student reported seeing a light in one of the windows in front of which appeared to be a shadowy silhouette of a young woman painting on a canvas sitting in an easel. Perhaps she was one of the many art students who graced this hall. signatures of many a student who ventured to this floor after it was closed off. The earliest signature that I found was dated 1939. It is an archive of the students who were brave enough to enter this level. This room also has windows. Uh, the archives had some documents stored in this room more than 20 years ago. The room had a lock to which the archives had the only key. I came here in here many times to find the window open with no sign that anyone had come in through the door. No one had requested the key and there were no footprints in the dust. This door leads to the stairs that go to the top of the clock tower. The stairs lead to a trap door 
that opens onto the open area at the top of the tower, located just under the clock faces. The open air area is the perfect place for the spirit of President D.B. Johnson to look down on the great university that was his brainchild. The next time you're walking past Main Building on a chilly autumn evening after the campus is quiet and still, look up toward the tower. You may just see D.B. Johnson's benevolent gaze surveying the campus he adored.